Okay, greetings, brothers and sisters. Just a few things to clarify about what's going on with both of my channels. Um, you know, I've had some YouTube-related issues. And, you know, I want to say that, because people will say that I'm being targeted in the comments, because I mentioned this in my last video, which this isn't the case. It's not that I'm being targeted or, or whatever it is. Um, this is YouTube policies like YouTube doesn't have a consciousness of my channel because it's not big enough somebody like Alex Jones they you know they were aware of Alex right these you know I mean people who have millions of sus subscribers but there's so many channels that have hundreds of thousands of subscribers it's no big deal to YouTube right the way that they censor you is for example when they change the COVID policy. So you could talk about vaccinations forever. Like there was no issues with vaccinations. They didn't demonetize your video for it. And they didn't give you a community guideline strike. And then if you even hinted at the word vaccination when they put up their medical misinformation guidelines, which have now loosened up again, they would give you a community guideline strike, but it was also retroactive. So that meant if you talked about it five years ago, that's why a bunch of my videos are privatized now. And so eventually I'll open those things back up and I'll explain that. I want to include that in the membership as well. Um, so all that I'll talk about in future videos. Uh, you know, I'll make uh, people who, do, who uh, subscribe to members will have access to all those old videos or whatever it is. Which I'll explain in, you know, some whenever I get that thing done, which may be never, right? <laughs> Given how I do things. But... You know, the idea is there. I'm kind of, I'm stuck on the emoji part. But anyways, so YouTube has, you know, they, they might go after a big channel if there, there's some kind of feedback or something. Um, but what they do is they just change the rules and you either adhere to those changes or they scrub your channel. And it's, you know, that's how they do it. It's not any, you know, personal things. I mean, they've changed the algorithm so people can't find your you know, your stuff, and then there's, you know, not giving um, uh, the, um, you know, the uh, the notifications and things, which is all across the board. YouTube, you know, this is algorithm stuff that affects everybody, not just truthers. And so I don't get paranoid about it. I'm very grateful for YouTube because of all the, you know, it's been a big part of my life since, I mean, 2007 is when I started the channel, but 2014 almost nine years I've been doing this as a job. You know, before it was just a, you know, a, a hobby. I'd make a video every, you know, month or so or whatever. But now it's, you know, I make content every day. You know, I met my wife through this channel. I mean, so many things have happened. It got me through a difficult time in terms of, uh, you know, being in India without the ability to, to uh, get income, right, to make income. And so, I mean, helped, uh, you know, it was just a, it's been a blessing. I like the way the platform's set up in terms of making videos and, you know, most things make sense and work okay, work, you know, pretty well. And some things work great, some things are, you know, not so great. But for the most part, I, you know, I like the platform, I like the, you know, all of it, and it's a routine. And I like it as a viewer. I watch YouTube videos all the time and have watched YouTube videos for a long time now. And it's been very helpful for me on the farm and learning things that I need to learn. And, you know, in terms of my health, it's been wonderful as well. So, you know, it's, there's, I don't have a problem with YouTube overall, but they do have some goofy stuff. So when I upload a video, it um, goes through a series of checks, right? There's, you know, it, YouTube it, uh, bots will go through the video and look for things. And, you know, I don't know how that works, but, it, you know, that's what happens. And it looks for copyright issues. So there's that, you know, check that, that part of the checking system. And it also checks to see if it's advertiser friendly. And so most of my videos are advertiser friendly right off the bat. You know, I've read through what advertiser friendly videos are and I make my videos advertiser friendly. And, you know, once in a while it yellows my video. If there's a copyright issue, I just go back and take that out, right? There was a part of my, uh, you know, video I made on my other channel. Hollywood celebrities dropping like flies video and somebody sent me a wrestling video where one of the wrestlers passes out and that got copyrighted. It was, you know, a, uh, I think that they were Mexican wrestlers. The WWE, the WWE copyrights everything. I 
posted something from them a while ago. And so, you know, I just took that whole bit out, right? Because I didn't want to mess with it, and then I re-uploaded the video. Um, so that's fairly straightforward. It takes some time or whatever, and, you know, copyright stuff is... Like, I, you know, if you post anything from, net, like, a Netflix trailer, they're going to bag you for that. So, you know, I just don't do it anymore because I don't want to waste my time taking it out and re-editing and, you know, uploading it again. And so for the most part, I don't have much copyright stuff. Sometimes I'm not sure of it. You know, CNN is really good about not copywriting, you know, as much as they suck for everything else, they're good at it, you know, MSNBC even. And so, um, you know, there are certain, it just depends on the company's policy. Some companies want their stuff out there and they don't care, you know, whether, whatever. Some companies like CBS is horrible at it. But anyways, that's the copyright stuff. And the other part is the advertiser-friendly. And if it comes up as yellow, I can request a review. And usually the reviews would take about 24 hours. And so it's not the end of the world. It's not great because a lot of times I cover things that in a couple of days, it's a problem, right? Because people have moved on from the story, right? The sooner you get to the story, the closer it is to a breaking story. When people are interested in it, the better. And so that, you know, sucks when that happens. It doesn't happen that much for me, so that's that's a positive, right? Um, and what happened was there was a, you know, one of these box ads where they where Huffington Post was running numerous ads in a little box. And there was a, a Spanish-speaking ad, you know, with Spanish language written word in it. And it was a porn site, and I would have never known it. You know, based in, you know, there's pictures of women's faces, but they were not, you, know, you never know what the ad was for, right? It didn't look like a porn site. And, you know, YouTube uh, demonetized my video, and then they did a review, and then finally they, they told me it was about sexual content. And I was like, what? And I combed through the video, and there was no sexual content in there. I talked about Trump banging Stormy Daniels, but, I mean, you know, that shouldn't be a, you know. And I, I talked about this in a recent, you know, the video itself. And so I combed through it, and I found this ad, and I, I, I searched the words, and I was like, oh, wow, this is it, right? This is their goofy thing. And, you know, ridiculous stuff. But it was in the beginning of the video, which is also a problem. If it had been later on in the video, they might have overlooked it. It's, things in the beginning of the video are more important to them because that's when, you know, the majority of people will shut the video off after five minutes or so or whatever it is. I mean, that's how YouTube, you know, thinks about it. But anyways, I fixed it and I uploaded it. And then it passed through the, the advertiser-friendly part but the copyright, it took like half a day. And then I uploaded my other video um, on my other channel. And that was taking, like, you know, I just released it this morning because, you know, there was an issue there with the copyright. So, you know, I don't know. It's, you know YouTube gets glitchy like that. It's kind of frustrating for me because the sooner I get the video up, the better on every level. So that's why I'm, I was a day behind on my... Hollywood Celebrity Dropping Like Flies videos, and I'm going to put shorts up today there. I have short three short videos on that my other channel. And then yesterday I put this, you know, long-awaited video that had been, you know, it took four days for me to get this one up. And so, um, you know, that video, I don't think many people saw that there had been a video uploaded uh, because, you know, there's less views on it, which, you know, also sucks. And so, you know, this happened with my short videos as well because I'm uploading a bunch of them. And um, well, here's the title of the video from, let me find it, YouTube's that it's slow here, my um, epic comic video, bogus Trump distraction. And so um, that's the video that had, again, I released it later um, than I normally would. So there's going to be two videos on this channel today, longer videos, and then, you know, I'll be back to normal tomorrow with them. Uh, Another Hollywood celebrity dropping like flies on back-to-back -back days. So it's a whole thing there, right? I'm putting up more content today because of that. I'll probably make this video a little bit shorter uh, because of, you know, I have a bunch of things I haven't covered because of the length of my other videos, uh, the last two videos here. So that's just what's going on here. It's a little bit complex, uh, you know, on my end. And so that's why the videos are out of order and, you know, it's a whole thing. But anyways, let's get to it here. Okay, so let's get into it here. Um, 
I uh, it's later on in the afternoon. I started this voiceover that you just heard in the morning, and I just looked at the video and it was demonetized again. <laughs> so I had to request a, a new review for this other video, and we'll I'll keep you posted on whether they pass it through or not, or they come up with whatever. We'll see what happens with it. It's just bizarre what's happening with YouTube and this thing. I'm going to start off with a Britney dance and a John Fetterman, you know, update, F Fetterman smash. But before I do that, I found on my short videos that Jojo Magoo was contradicting himself bizarrely enough. So let's watch that here. Okay, so I was watching my short video with my wife. And Jojo Magoo says something ridiculous. My wife said, well, I, I don't think he even has uh, four brothers or three brothers, right? <laughs> Which we'll get to in a moment. And I was like, yeah, he only has two. And so we looked it up and he lied about that. I'll show you that first. It's one in one of the short videos I just uploaded. It's not public yet, but by the time this is published, hopefully it will be. And then... In a very similar, at the same time period, he contradicts his own lies and his own, you know, he just goes on these walking rants. So this um, video is entitled, Duh, Jojo, your dad was banging your mom. <laughs> and I'll play the whole thing, but let's play the first part first here. Class home back in Delaware, a three-bedroom house with four kids and and a uh, grandpa living with us, a split-level home. Wait. So first he says he has a split-level home, it's three bedrooms, and there are four kids. Which is true, but one of them is a sister, and there's two brothers. And so if his grandfather's living with him and taking up one bedroom, his parents have the other bedroom, then where is his sister sleeping? Okay, so let's go back to the short video here. Are you Charlie from the Chocolate Factory? Are your four grandparents sleeping in the same bed in your living room? My bedroom was next to my mom and dad's, my, me and my three brothers. And we had two sets of bunks. He only had two brothers and one sister. So he's remembering four bunk beds, and he's remembering three brothers, but only two existed. And he's going to contradict this in another clip around the same time. He's going on a, you know... Um, saving uh, costs for American family tour. And so if his grandfather's in one bedroom, there's three bedrooms, parents in another, his sister's in the same room as him and his other two brothers. And he probably doesn't want to say that. You know, like that seems to be the, the issue here. Let's go back to this image here. So this is um, three siblings, two brothers, and a sister. Okay, let's go back to the video clip. And you could tell when dad was, was was restless. I remember one night, true story, one night my dad, I could feel like the, he was rolling in bed because the headboard was hit the side of the, the, wall, the wall. And, my, and I, next morning I asked my, I said, God, it's true, that's my mom. I said, I was in, I think, a junior in high school. So what's the matter with, with dad? He said, he just, we just lost our insurance. His business was no longer going to cover insurance for the employees. <laughs> and he was begging me. <laughs> so the joke was obviously when the headboard hits the the back of the wall, that's what you associate with that, right? But, you know, when you hear that, you think his dad was banging his mom. And it's just weird. He's, all, he's just so weird. But now that he's given the math and he said he's had three brothers and he didn't, and there were four bunk beds, I'm thinking his sister was in there with him with two other teenage boys. So his... Teenage sister was sleeping in a bunk bed and with in the room with the boys. You know, I mean, his daughter's diary said that he would he would shower with her when she was a teenager. And he's just a weird sniffling snoozling, just a weird guy, a liar. You know, his family was actually richer than. I mean, he lies about everything, plagiarizes. But given how weird he is and how this story went, and how he remembered four bunk beds. Again, you know, if he wasn't lying, which, he, you know, I mean, he's always lying, but maybe he was sharing a, a room with his sister. His sister had to share a room with her three teenage brothers, and one of them was sniffling, snoozing, groper Jojo Magoo. And then in another, uh, in another short that I made, he says this. 
My mother had the fortune of having successful my having two successful brothers and a sister. Two successful brothers and sisters. So where are the four bunk beds coming from, right? And this imaginary story that you had. He's just so weird and inappropriate, and this is a messed up family. But there's something going on with his math here. He's always a liar, and it could be something really weird where his sister was in there with him or whatever it is, right? But either way, the guy shouldn't be president. <laughs> He's unfit to be president. I want to get to Fetterman next, his wife and Fetterman. Um, Fetterman smash. But let's start off with Brittany Dance. We haven't done this in a while. Lame, reposting to remind myself to stay active. With the two A's and active. Um, there she goes. There she goes coming in slow. And then, boom, point to your eyes. Spin around, wave your hands back and forth, back and forth, back and up forth, going back around, big and bound, fingers up, up, swing my arms, swing my arms, swing my arms, swing my arms, yeah, touch your face, touch your face, walk back slowly, there you go, walk back, <laughs> skip to my loo, there, yeah, salute, who are you saluting? There you do another salute, there we go, salute, double salute, bam, and smile, laugh, here, taking a break, here, being silly, spin around, spin around, spin around, spin around, spin around, spin around, spin around. Spin around, spin around, grab my my top, and we are squeezing someone's bosoms. <laughs> We're gonna here, roll the dice. Here we go, double fist. Then we go back again. It's just starting over again. Point to my eyes. Yeah, it is. So I just want to point out, Brittany J Spears has pulled off the deft of fine trick of the double salute. She did it. No one thought she could do it, but she did it. She nailed it. She's back. She's not crazy, like people say. She's you know. I mean, she's just an artist. <laughs> um, so there's Giselle Barreto Fetterman. Oh, the gentleness, how far more potent it is than force. And so um, banned books and burning books are the same. Both are done for the same reason. Now there's some kind of burning thing here. There's um, two community waterway scientists excited to keep PA waterways beautiful. But this is the stuff I want to get into. It's coming down here. Grateful, flowers blooming, the bus balloon, Jiao found at the the next, I'm not sure who is next, the Jiao is, normalizing conversation around mental health, growing and learning together, blooming flowers always. And so there's the blooming flowers. There she is, dressed in some kind of weird gown at the hospital there's understanding depression and there's the happy couple people are saying he's been replaced but there's also a thread about him disappearing but just think about the guy is non-existent right like, you know he had a stroke and he won an election and you know he kept the the democrats in power in the senate and now he's basically been disappeared and he was, you know, horrible as a candidate and now even worse as a senator. But then um, I noticed that there was uh, trending politics, John Fetterman. And uh, it says, Dad, husband to Giselle Fetterman, just like, uh, you know, Joe Biden says, I'm Jill's husband. I'm not going to show you the meme, but I have one. Senator for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So he's a husband first, dad first, husband second. Senator third, and that's consistent. Read the headline. John Fetterman could remain hospitalized for two more weeks as docs try to get meds exactly right. So he's going to be heavily medicated on antidepressants, which often have suicidal effects, right? Um, so and he's just aging and like, you know, Fetterman no longer smashed. Fetterman barely, Fetterman depressed, right? <laughs> and... Republicans demand Fetterman release video to show that he is alive and well. I mean, this is what's going on with Fetterman. They're lying about Dianne Feinstein's health. They're lying about John Fetterman's health. They're lying about Mitch McConnell's health. They're lying about Joe Biden's health. John Fetterman's health is getting better and could be released in, a, in little as two weeks, according to a doctor's. You are in our hearts, Senator, and hope for a safe return. Rich from California, hearted if you agree. <laughs> It's a miracle and only 
three weeks, Fetterman got a total head replacement. And so I don't know what's happened with that. People are saying that this is uh, not the same guy. I don't even know if that's a picture of him. You know, they don't replace people like, you know, this is a big Republican right-wing theory. I mean, we'll see. You know, you can't imitate Fetterman, the way he talks and all these things. You know, it's it would be very hard to, uh, you know, all of it. I'm not the one to push conspiracy theory, but John Fetterman's face looks totally different. So that's what's going on with Fetterman. So Jojo Magoo, there's other gaffes. I only got to one of them in my last video. Richard Blanco uh, returned to a poem he wrote from the second inaugural of Barack and Me. A poem, one today, it says, And always one moon like a silent drum tapping at every rooftop and every window on every, in, of every county. Okay, he's reading this, right? So remember this part, because the county's going to come back up when he reads it again. He's reading this, right? And it's a, a poem that somebody wrote when Barack Obama was inaugurated, I think, the second time he said. Of course, it could be just imaginary. Every county, country, I'm, let me start this over again. <laughs> I'm getting so intimidated by being here. Yeah, that's it, or maybe you're senile. <laughs> and always one moon like a silent drum tapping on every rooftop and every window of one country, county, county, all of us facing the stars. Hope, a new constellation waiting for us to map it, waiting for us to name it together. So is it country or county, right? <laughs> like, we don't know. <laughs> okay, so I went and looked it up. I mean, the poem sucked, I guess. I don't, you know, I, no one could tell by JoJo's rendition. So the poem is long as F, right? It's a very long poem. So Jojo Magoo chose to read the very end of it. Here is Richard Blanco reading his rendition. And always one moon, like a silent drum tapping on every rooftop and every window of one country. It's one country, okay? Now he read it a lot better. I mean, it still sucked. I didn't like it. Talked about the Freedom Tower and other things. Um, you know, whatever it is. I don't like poems in general. But it's one country, Jojo Magoo, not one county. Why would, why would it be one county, right? <laughs> the whole point of the poem. And so he butchered the thing and he's reading it. Like he can't even read a teleprompter anymore. That's how bad he is. I like babies more than people. This is what Jojo Magoo said. Drug companies that raise prices faster than inflation. Now, that's all right. We like babies. You don't have to worry about it. It's okay. I bet you do, you creepy m and -er. It's okay. It's all right. Woo, right. <laughs> he likes babies. Woo, he's a creep. Woo, he likes his babies. Woo. In fact, I like babies better than people. Of course you do. People are much more gamey, and they don't produce as much adrenochrome. There he is with the baby. Run, kid. Run for your life. Get away from that creepy. There he goes, no nosing the kid, doesn't know the kid, decides to nozzle him. You know, Jesus, look at his face. Look at that creepy Evan Effa right there. Why would you want your kid around? Run, kid. Call for your mom. Start crying, kid. Cry. You've got survival skills. Now he's nozzling his neck. This, is just, again, doesn't know who this kid is. Just doing his creepy Jojo Magoo stuff. Kylie Jenner Empire expands. The Star 25 introduces new mascara line for Kylash after already making $1 billion off of lip kits. And this is the, one of my viewers sent me this. Can you get more creepy than that? Like, you know, like Spirit Halloween Silicon Valley Bank. <laughs> That's a great meme. China plan could end war, but Ukraine and West not ready for peace, Putin said. And so he says that China has a plan to end the war, but the West isn't wanting the war to end. So this is a show called Ridley Jones, which is for preschoolers. That means kids that are under the age of six. So this is toddlers to, you know, through the age of five. You know, kindergarten, I guess, would be you know, preschool is actually before kindergarten, so it's 
Very young kids, right? This can't wait any longer. If I'm going to leave the herd, I want to do it as myself. After all, you always say to lead with your heart, right? To reiterate, this is a show for preschool, which you can clearly see. And they're dropping these adult concepts on these, you know, kids watch it, the viewers. Well, my heart says that the way I feel most myself is to go by the name Fred. That's because I'm non-binary, and Fred's the name that fits me best. And I also use they and them, because calling me a she or a he doesn't feel right to me. Oh, I didn't know that. No wonder you've been struck. Okay, so... I'm not going to get into whether, you know, this is appropriate and the whole non-binary thing. I mean, I know how you guys feel about it. I'm not going to discuss that for, you know, whatever YouTube reasons. But I do want to talk about development, child development, and when they're ready for abstract concepts. Because you might as well be talking about calculus or physics here in terms of what a kid's ready to understand. This concept that they just put out there in terms of non-binary and in terms of they, them pronouns is for preschoolers who are in no way, shape, or form ready to understand such things. So I'm not going to talk about between 9 and 12 months and 12 and 18 months, but we can start here with 18 to 24 months, one, point, one and a half years to two years old. Remember past events and have a sense of time. Mimic activities and use their imagination. Try and take care of a baby doll the same way parents take care of them. Recognize certain people in their life. Auntie, grandma can be painted in pictures, but strangers can be suspicious. Can counter get the idea of numbers and quantities, right? So this is the audience, the beginning of the audience where they'd be watching this show. Speaking words or even grammatically incorrect sentences, right? So from two to three years old, which you know when you have toddlers, they start to talk, but they're not, you know, they're, they're, they don't know like pronouns, right? A kid this age doesn't know pronouns and um, have learned colors, animals, letters, shapes, etc. Move on to advanced problem solving. They'll figure out how stacking books works or how to put together a train set. They might, they might also try to open doorknobs, respond to their name and verbally name other people they know. Like they don't have object permanence where if they close a door, they, they don't know you're on the other side of the door, right? Like this is, you know, the same thing with dogs. Like dogs have, you know, whatever it is, right? Different levels of comprehension. And they don't know, you know, that something is like a, an object is permanently somewhere else, right? You know, a dog burying a bone. Be able to dress themselves three years old. Know their age and, and sex and say their name. Follow instructions with more than one step, right? So this is them being told they're a boy or a girl and, you know, these types of things. You know, it's not complex, abstract concepts of non-binary. Ages three to four years old, ask why and get curious about things or reasons for the way it is. Use memories to predict future outcomes. Like they start understanding like, oh, you know, there's, there's something that's over here and, you know, I did this thing and when I did this thing before, it ended up like this. You know, just the bare basic understanding of, oh, yeah, I did this in the past and if I do this again, the same outcome will, will happen, right? Between the ages of four and five, draw identifiable objects or pictures, figure out what words rhyme, have reasonable conversation with a variety of words that can say how they feel and what they want, answers the questions of sensibility, put on their clothes and take them off without much help, demonstrate control of their bodies through intentional movement, balance, strength. They can use the stairs with, without holding the, the hand, uh, without holding your hand, climb playgrounds, use a tricycle, etc. right? So this is what a, a kid that age is capable of. And so the idea of they, them pronouns, they're not even aware of that. They're not, you know, they haven't learned to read yet. They don't even understand basic words. And when they do start reading, you know, four, five, six years old, they read these remedial books, you know, 
Good Night Moon, these, you know, board books or whatever it is. These types of books. They don't have any, you know, Dick and Jane books. You know, when, when I was a kid, right, all these, you know, very um, basic books. And they don't have the idea of like, you know, language and sexual identity and gender and all these things. They, they're incapable of understanding this concept they just put in this show. Like they have no idea. I mean, they don't even, you have to understand the original model to understand this new model that they're pushing in. You have to understand the binary model, which they don't. They're not, you know, you have, they haven't been given sex education. They don't understand these things. And, you know, they're not even aware of it within themselves, right? And so they don't even understand the original model, the binary model. So how are they going to understand non-binary? You have to understand binary before you understand non-binary. And it's, so it's completely age inappropriate. In fact, this show was taken off the air. Netflix canceled it because of the controversy. But kids this age, uh, aside from whether you believe non-binary is, a, a, you know, is a real or not or whatever it is, you know, depending on your point of view, everyone should be able to agree that this is inappropriate for kids. Kids aren't ready to understand this. It's not something they can understand. So you're just indoctrinating them. The most that they can do is repeat what they've been told and what they've you know been shown here. Plus, kids, when they're watching TV like everybody else, their brains are in a receptive state. They're not in an active state. They're not in an active beta mode. They're in a passive alpha mode. And so, you know, a, a concept like this, again, parents will try to explain it, liberal parents or whatever, but kids just aren't ready for it and shouldn't be. Like, it's just putting something on them that they don't, they're not ready to, to deal with. We live in a very highly sexualized world and kids experience seeing sexual graphic material or sexual material on the internet and TV shows and things like this at far too young ages. But in a natural in a natural world, I'm in the editing process, I decided to add this, but in a natural sort of there's things that I you know, ideas that came to me as I was listening to the you know, what I was saying before. And in a you know, natural world, kids just don't experience this. They'll see animals mating, you know, my kids saw the goats mating on the farm and they get an idea where babies come from, these sorts of things, right? But you don't start telling the kids about the birds and the bees or whatever it is or sex ed or whatever they're doing until they're much older and really when they're an adolescent like they start being conscious of it seven eight nine years old and you know again because of what's on television and and their friends and you know peers or whatever but the internet now but kids you know for the most part they don't know right especially really young kids and they don't want to know like when you start talking to young kids about adult concepts, their brains just are like, dude, I'm not ready for that, right? They just, <laughs> not, not just their brains, they, they shut off. And if you talk to kids who grew up in a you know, non-liberal family where the, the parents are pushing the non-binary narrative to them, again, it's a, a theory. This isn't a proven scientific fact or any of this stuff. It's a theory. Most kids, if you ask them, explained explain the binary model of, you know, human sexuality. I mean, you, you put that in some sort of terms kids could understand. They wouldn't be able to even explain the model, the original model. And the original model is very easy to understand. There are boys and there are girls, right? I mean, that's all there is. That was what I grew up with, with, you know, most of you grew up with. There were boys and there were girls. And that's, you know, as simple as it could be, and kids kind of understood that. Maybe they didn't know why they were boys and girls. They realized they got a mother and a father, and they knew who the boys were and who the girls were, but that's it, right? They didn't you know, need to know or care to know any more than that. And that's all kids under the age of you know, 10, 11. I mean, <laughs> you know, kids in general need to know because, again, you know, maybe at some point they start dating when they're, they're little kids. I mean, kids are growing up faster, and girls are menstruating earlier, but... Certainly at age five or six, that's all you need to know, right? There doesn't need to be anything else at that stage in your development because you're adding something now, you know, the simplicity of there are two sexes, male and female, is that some people, a small percentage of the population, feel as though they are both 
or one or the other, uh, the opposite of their sex of their birth, right? And so that's a lot harder to explain to kids. Like they just, I mean, I don't even fully understand. I know that people feel this way, but I don't understand the theory. And it used to be considered a disorder by the DSM four and five, the psych psychological world. So, you know, that's how it used to be considered. And now they're saying no. And and I've heard the information. They have, you know, all these genders. There's like something like a hundred and something odd genders. These there's like vapor gender and things like this. And kids that young just can't understand that. And why would you, you know, try to teach them that? I mean, they're not ready for it. It's just, you know, again, if they have something later on where they start developing, you know, in terms of their internal world, and then this is a category they would fit in, and that's something different, right? Then that's addressed to the individual child. But children change dramatically. You see toddlers who are like wild and, you know, out of control, and then they grow up to be very, uh, like, OCD type of people. Like, they have a complete personality flop. Uh, they, you know, they switch. Their personalities change dramatically from their small kids. I saw this with all my kids. And you just see this with little kids. They're, you know, as they grow older, they become different. And as they become adults, even, you can see dramatic changes. You know, people change even, you know, have uh, dramatic changes even as adults sometimes in their personality configuration. And so this doesn't need to be dropped on preschoolers. Like these concepts, like I said, it's like trying to teach them calculus or teach them, uh, you know, physics or something when they haven't even had basic science or they haven't had addition and subtraction yet. And so, you know, it's just uh, this need that's being pushed out there to to get to these kids and indoctrinate them. And the best that they could do is parrot back what they heard in the show, but they'd never be able to understand it, right? Because they don't even really understand the original concept of binary. And so the simple concept of binary, they're not fully, you know, they don't fully understand that, right? And the non-binary theory is a lot more complex. So, you know, I mean, that is what it is. And this show, like totally inappropriate for little kids. I mean, it's just... And so many different levels. All right, let's move on to the next thing here. Of anybody that has ever spent five minutes or five hours in Afghanistan, what idiot would believe it is smart to remove the military force and leave the diplomats behind? And obviously it ended with them 50 days later having to bring back 3,000 to 8,000 troops. So what idiot decided that? Well, pursuant to the agreement reached by the previous administration with the Taliban that called for the withdrawal of all of our forces, all of them, what uh, by May idiot 31st, decided uh, to pull out mm -hmm. the main fighting force before pulling out the diplomats, which resulted in 3,000 to 8,000 additional troops being sent back into Afghanistan? What idiot decided that? Um, again, Congressman, uh, pursuant to the agreement that had been reached by the previous administration, we were to withdraw all of our forces. So you're not going to answer the question. Uh, Par for the course with you. Person. Thank you for answering some of my questions today. I hope you answer more of them later. I believe, Your Honor, he's leading with the idiot. <laughs> he's leading the witness <laughs> with referring to the person as an idiot, but, you know, whatever. So Madam Expiration Day, to her own song, started to do this. I think it's on The Tonight Show. Um, and... Just, you know, can you get any more expiration date? Like, <laughs> Much of the United States is currently witnessing the northern lights. Currently a severe, strong geomet geomagnetic storm is taking place hitting the United States. And because of that, you can see the northern lights. But I believe this is, you know, because this happened a year ago. And never in the southern hemisphere or the, you know, uh, below... You know, the, the very northernmost states in Canada, could you see the northern lights? But now all of a sudden it's becoming um, more of a regular occurrence. And it's, it's because the magnetic fields are starting to weaken because of the, there's going to be a flop in the, you know, it's the, the uh, reversal of the magnetic poles. And when that happens, um, well, things are going to, you know, there's all kinds of bad things that happen with that in terms of our electromagnetic, you know, all of our electricity, all of our 
technology and our electrical grid itself is very susceptible to a solar flare hitting the United States. Solar flares are now becoming more, you know, there was one that, that was on the opposite of the side of the sun and affected the earth. And a solar flare hitting the earth when the magnetic field is weakened is, you know, a, a catastrophe that could wipe out all of our electrical systems permanently. And, you know, that's game over. Okay, so I didn't I didn't get to all the headlines. I only got to one toolbar. <laughs> like it's just, I can't get through them. I mean, some of these headlines are from three videos ago. They're like up there for like a week. Um, but I just, I'm running out of time here. But anyways, I just want to end with this stuff about Trump. I'd be shocked if he gets arrested at this point. It seems like the case is falling apart a little bit and you know, they have a grand jury and, you know, the whole thing is ridiculous. Like, it's such a small, insignificant crime, and he's a former president. And so, um, you know, like I was always saying, I was, I'd be shocked if they put Trump in jail because they need him. He's the center of their universe. Their whole agenda surrounds Trump. I keep on saying this. If he goes to prison, then there's just no stories about him. I mean, there's nothing. He can't post things on the Internet. He's not doing anything, and... You can't keep him, you can't make every story about him and blame him for everything. Like, he's been punished, too. That's the other aspect of it. Like, the Democrats, when Trump is in jail, you no longer can say he needs to be punished more because he's being punished. It just, you know, it's like it. it's the end of a story. It's, uh, you know, it reconciles something. All these people are wanting Trump to go to jail. They hate Trump. Yeah, okay. But he goes to jail, and then they move on to something else, right? You can... Put that behind you. And so I'd be shocked if they ever convict him of anything. There might be a trial because they've impeached him a couple of times. And, you know, just as a distraction. But, my God, like this thing with Stormy Daniels is the worst. You know, if you're going to do something with all the crimes that he's allegedly committed. And as bad as Trump is, you know, as bad as he sucks, they, you know, they need him more than any other candidate like this is more to get DeSantis like Trump is now polling much stronger than DeSantis because of this arrest has galvanized his support amongst his dummies or whatever it is who buy into the thing right and so this is more about getting rid of DeSantis than it is about you know emboldening Trump we already know as a president he wasn't able to do any things that the you know Democrats are so worried about and he wasn't able to fulfill his promises especially the ones about, you know, the deep state and all these other things. And so, um, yeah, I'd be shocked. Like, it's just it's just uh, not a legitimate story. But anyways, I'm going to end this thing here. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano, definitely reporting from the Apocalypse and the Ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.